and I'm going to answer this as a, so there's a lot of different goals that a lot of women can have. I'm going to answer this kind of on par with what my goals are and what I see most of like the majority of women that I work with, they are looking to create more of an hourglass figure. So kind of like a widening, let's say of the top, a coming in or a slimming of the hips and then like a flare, I'm sorry, coming in at the waist and then a flare um, at the hips. So I, in order to do that, we want to be thinking about developing strength in the legs. So primarily in the glutes, right? So we want to be growing the booty, hamstrings and quads. We want a beautiful, uh, kind of, uh, plump, uh, hamstring in the back that you can kind of sink your teeth into. And then from the front, we want more of a quad sweep. So in, again, in that sort of flare, the vastus lateralis, which is the, uh, outer part, let's say of the quadricep, we want to develop the vastus lateralis. There's a couple other muscles, sartorius and, 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 and what have you that are going to also contribute to that sort of flare. And then in the upper body, we want to be thinking about capping out the shoulders. So developing the frontal of uh, the front delts, the medial delt, the posterior delt, and then developing the latissimus dorsi or called the lats, usually called the lats. Um, and then the, just the back in general. And I'll just, uh, again, pulling from my, my chiropractic background, because we are seated, this is also a functional approach to developing a better body and better body composition as well. Because when we are thinking about the back and focusing in on, like, I actually don't do a lot of chest work. Uh, and the reason for that is I sit at a desk. I'm sitting here recording this for you right now. I sit when I, as I was preparing what I was going to be talking about today, I sat at a desk, I had a Google doc open, etc. So I'm already sitting in kind of a shortened pec position, right? So I do have ergonomic chairs and stuff that I try to, you know, lean back in and what have you, but I'm bent over. I'm in that, in like my, the pecs are short, you know, the internal rotation of that shoulder can kind of creep in creating sort of a longer and weaker back. So as a general rule, if you do want to be uh, working your chest, I typically will work uh, the back like three times as often as I do the chest. And in my case, I don't even work the chest at all. Like I do some, you know, if I'm doing, let's say an incline dumbbell press, uh, where I'm trying to hit the, uh, the front lats, like, sure, you're going to get, you're going to get some chest, like you're always going to get some, but it's not a chest specific, um, program. So legs, we want to work glutes, hams, quads, and then upper body. We want to be working on shoulders and back, right? So like thinking about like flaring, think about your lats as your angel wings. We want to be able to <laughs> flare the angel wings. And then think about like the shoulders as like the bread bun, right? We want to have like a nice, uh, defined, um, lateral protrusion or coronal plane protrusion of the, uh, of the deltoid muscle. And so when you're thinking about, so now we have the muscles. So now we want to think about the order in which we want to work them as a general rule, compound movements to start, meaning multi joint movements. So a multi joint movement in the lower body would be a squat. It would be a lunge. It would be a hip thruster in the upper body. It would be a pull up. It would be a barbell row. It would be a one armed row. It would be, um, those would be some examples. So you're moving like some of the big muscles in the body and you're using the shoulder and the elbow, let's say in the upper body in order to facilitate that. Uh, and then the lower body obviously is going to be the knees and the, and the hips and then the ankles as well. So we start with multi joints and then we moved to, then we'll move as the, as the workout progresses into more of a single joint, um, exercise. So in the lower body, that might mean uh, a hamstring curl machine. It might mean a quadricep, like a knee extension machine. Uh, in the upper body, we could be doing the shoulders. Like it could be like, a, even though technically uh, we'll just, we'll just count the deltoids as like a, a single joint, even though there's a couple of joints that are working, but single joint movement. Uh, I mean, the, the, the scapula is rotating and moving as well, but We'll, we'll just for the, for, for simplicity, we'll call the deltoids like a single joint movement. So you might do like your lateral raises, let's say towards the end of a program versus starting off with them or a frontal raise, let's say, um, at the end of the program versus, uh, starting off with them. A better example actually of a single joint movement is like a bicep curl or a tricep extension, right? Because we are, even though we're technically still, I guess we're technically still doing two joints because the bicep crosses both the shoulder and the elbow. Okay. I'm getting tripped up all in my head now. So let's just, let's just go with like multi-joint to single joint 
um, movement. Now, the only exception to this, the only exception to this, Betty's, is if you never feel, uh, if you never feel a muscle when you are doing it, you can start with a single joint exercise. So for example, if you are doing a squat, and I used to hear this all the time in practice, if you are doing a squat and you never feel your butt, let's say, you're like, nope, I feel it all in my quads. I would probably get you to start off with a glute only exercise. So maybe that's banded uh, abductions, right? Or you can go in the abductor machine if you're working in a gym, or you can do crab walks, which is basically like a banded, like you have a booty band around your knees or your ankles if you want to make it harder. And then like literally sitting in a squat position and then walking sideways one way and then returning on the other, on the other leg and then going into the squat. Because that initial kind of priming, if you will, is going to help you feel that muscle more in the compound movement. So if you're someone who's like, God, I just never feel my butt when I'm doing a squat, um, you can try pre or priming the, um, the squat with, let's say a specific glute exercise. Now, if you're someone who does a squat and you kind of don't feel it anywhere, that's fine. It's just specifically if you're like, no, I totally feel it in my quads. I totally feel it on my hamstrings. I totally feel it in, you know, in my back, but I don't feel it in my butt. That's where we want to, that's where we want to sort of do that single joint movement. And I could get into the why around glute amnesia or lower cross syndrome, but the, the basics of it is the same reason why I like to train back more often than I train chest, if at all, is because we are sitting on our butt all the time in an elongated position. So uh, if you are a chiropractor, you may know, or if you're a clinician who uh, is interested in body work, you may know of dynamic neuro um, muscular stabilization or DNS, uh, or you may have heard the term lower cross syndrome. This is really describing the compensatory mechanisms, let's say in the low back and in, at the knee joint because our glutes are not activating, right? So this is a very, very, very common thing to have glutes that don't activate in the way that they should because we sit on them. And if you are in perimenopause, you have been probably sitting on your asset, pun intended, wah, wah. Uh, you've been probably sitting for 20 years, right? So it's very, and your glutes will turn off. Your glutes are not you know, it's like kind of use it or lose it, right? If your glutes are not being used, uh, they are going to, you're going to downregulate the neuromuscular connection there. So it's going to be harder for you to kind of have that mind muscle connection to the glutes specifically. So that's, that's kind of how you might think about structuring it, right? So I've given you the muscles, I've given you the order, a little bit of an exception. I'll give you a concrete example. Currently my Current split is a little more volume um, than I'm doing a six day split. I normally am really happy with a four or five, but I am just really wanting to grow my shoulders even more right now. So right now I have three lower body days and three upper body days. Um, so the lower body days I split into, uh, fo so d like the first lower body day is more of a quad focus. Now I will say that I'm, I'm doing, let's say on my quad day, I'm doing like goblet squats, like elevated heel goblet squats, which are supposed to activate the quad more and they do, but that's not to say that I'm not using my butt and my hamstring. So I still am using other, uh, muscles, but I am focusing more on the quads. So day one is going to be like more of a quad focus day. Day two for the lower body is going to be like more of a hamstring and glute day. And then day three is just glutes. So I just have a monster glute day, um, usually on a Sunday when I have more time to just do my butt. Okay. And then the three upper body days are two shoulders and one back. So, um, and then with every, uh, with every upper body day, I'm always doing pull-ups because I'm really, really, really trying to do 10. I really, really, really want to do 10 in a row. Uh, and I just have not been able to kind of punch back, punch past seven. Like I have seven and then I'm just done. So trying to, trying to increase my, um, my capacity for pull-ups. So I have three uppers, three lowers. Now to be clear, I am not recommending that you start that. I have been training for many, many years. I would recommend that you start one day a week. So that might be one full body day a week. So you do some lower, 
some upper, it's all compound movements, right? So you're doing some squats, some lunges, and then you're doing some pulls, maybe you're doing some scapular retractions because you're trying to do pull-ups. And then you move into more of the ISO, like the single joint movements, like, like you get to the hamstring curl machine, or maybe you do the quad extension machine, maybe you do the abductor machine, et cetera. Um, and then I also say currently for me, uh, cause people always ask, okay, so that's your resistance training. What about cardio? Currently cardio is just like how many steps I have in a day. So I don't have like a specified cardio day. Like I don't have, you know, when I'm my day off, so I train six days, I have one day off. I'll make sure that I walk a lot on that day. I may, if I have energy, go to the gym and like do the step mill, but that's sort of really inconsistent. I'm trying to clock somewhere between six to eight, like six to 8,000 steps is sort of my target that I have for myself. Um, and I usually, uh, when I am walking, it is happening after dinner. It's usually with the kids. Um, maybe sometimes it's a family bike ride, which is so annoying because my aura ring does not know how to count my bike. So it's almost like I didn't even do it, but you know, my activity, let's say is what you might call low intensity, steady state or L I S S for short. Um, I'll also take my, uh, son, sometimes I'll do like mummy sunny dates where I'll just take one of my kids, one of my sons out and we'll either go for a run. We'll play soccer together. Um, I'm planning on taking just to kind of wrap up the uh, snow season, uh, here in Ontario, uh, just taking him on a cross country. Like I'm going to take my, um, my older son, just me and him. We're going to go cross country skiing, which I'm really excited about. And they would absolutely kill me if they knew I was telling you about our mummy sunny dates. So I am just trusting that you're going to keep it on the DL for me there as well.